innovate or die. That's the two options that every high-tech company in the world faces. They either innovate or they die. And let me give you a few examples before we uh, jump into security. Microsoft, everybody thought Microsoft is invisible. Nokia, everybody thought Nokia was invisible in the, invis invincible in the cell phone st um, um, uh, market and you know, General Motors in the car market, but they're not because they haven't innovated. So innovation is very, very important. Anyone, anyone knows this movie? Hacker, the movie Hacker. This is Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie. Um, in 1995, Hollywood came up with this movie, and in this movie, this kid hacked 1,500 computers. He hacked 1,500 computers in one day and brought them down. The, 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 the Dow Jones in the movie dropped seven points in one day because of this hack. This was what, was, this was what Hollywood was dreaming about in 1995. Okay, and then Bill Gates was on the cover of Time magazine in 1995, master of the universe. We know where Microsoft is today, right? Let's jump forward to 2011. Now it's Mark Zuckerberg on the Time magazine. It's not Bill Gates anymore. And the movie Hackers, much worse than that, became a reality. Today, anyone with a computer can bring down a country, okay? Back then, Hollywood thought that bringing down 15,000 computers, in, 1,500 computers in one day was um, um, a good way to, to, a good thing for a movie, right? Why am I telling you all this story? The reason I'm telling you all this story is because it might be surprising to you, but the technology that enterprises use to protect their network today, the firewall technology, the intrusion detection and prevention technology, the antivirus technology, the anti-spyware technology, all that technology was developed around 1995, and it hasn't changed since then. Today's internet. Really, nothing has changed, okay? Nothing has, nothing has changed since I built the firewall at Checkpoint, and then I was also the chief technology officer at NetScreen. I built the firewall at NetScreen, and then I built the firewall at Juniper, and everybody else was copying these firewalls, right? All the other vendors. Nothing has changed since then in the technology, the core technology of the firewall, and the same applies to antivirus, and the same applies to IDS, and the same applies to many other technologies deployed on user networks. There's been no innovation. Applications like this, Salesforce, WebEx, SharePoint, we see them all the time, right? I'm sure many of you are using this, some of these applications at least. These applications are on many enterprise networks because enterprises want these applications, because these applications are important for the business to conduct its business, right? But these applications have dangers associated with them. SharePoint. If someone stores a, virus fi a file with a virus in SharePoint, and then everybody else in the enterprise accesses that file, now they have that virus. WebEx. WebEx is a great tool for conferencing, right? for, for web-based presentations. But WebEx also allows desktop sharing. It allows anyone from the outside to control a desktop on the inside of the enterprise without any supervision once the user enables that. Okay? WebEx also allows file sharing. WebEx allows someone from the enterprise to send a file to someone on a WebEx conference without going through any traditional file checking mechanism like virus scanning and data leakage scanning and so on and so forth. And Salesforce.com, the same thing. You cannot control the content that goes to Salesforce.com. That can be dangerous. Confidential information can be shared through Salesforce.com. So these applications are desired by enterprises. Enterprises use these applications, but they carry risk. They carry a lot of risk, and enterprises need to, today, to take that risk in order to use these applications. So first, 96% of enterprises in the world, and the same number is true for Europe, have Facebook on them. 96% of networks in the world, enterprise networks in the world, have Facebook on them. Some of them, they don't want Facebook. Some of them say, we don't want to, use, to allow Facebook. They actually try to block Facebook. It's just it's impossible to block Facebook. Two weeks ago, Facebook announced that they're switching to HTTPS. All Facebook traffic is going to be encrypted very soon. There's no way to block Facebook. You can see the numbers here. If you think it's going to happen, you are, according to Albert Einstein at least, insane. So what, is, what are the incumbent vendors? What are the big vendors saying when faced with the question of, OK, what do we do with Facebook? What do we do with Twitter? What do we do with all these applications? What do we do with Salesforce.com? What do we do with WebEx? Do we, what do we do with SharePoint? Their answer is this. Block it. 
Go to any big vendor in the network security industry, the large firewall vendors, and they'll all tell you, well, you can either block Facebook or not block Facebook. We suggest that you block it, otherwise you get a lot of bad things through it. You should block all these applications. We'll continue to secure your web and email. Everything else should be blocked. That's their answer. That's not innovation. That's actually going backwards, right? Basically, you know, before I switch to that slide, what they do is they make the IT department say no to everything. What is the innovative approach? So what do we do about it? Okay, it's very simple. It's very simple what needs to be done about it. I'm sure you already know the answer of what needs to be done about it. What you need to do is to take security and extend it to all applications. It's that applications, it's that simple. Instead of just focusing on web and email and saying all the rest should be blocked or all the rest should be allowed or whatever, you should securely enable the use of all these applications. Whatever you do for web and email, you should do for Facebook, and you should do for WebEx, and you should do for Gmail, and you should do for Salesforce.com, and you should do for SharePoint, and for any other application that you decide to allow through your network. Exactly the same. If you scan web traffic for viruses, you should do the same thing for WebEx traffic, and you should do the same thing for Salesforce.com traffic. Okay? By that, you're, first, you're again visibility and control. You can actually start seeing your network, not in terms of web and email. But in terms of all applications, email should be done for these applications. This is what it means to safely enable an application. Okay? In essence, when you do that, your IT department, instead of saying no to everything, will never say never again to an application. Thank you very much. in and out of the, the network perimeter. And I get that's, that's sort of where you were going with the, um, with the next gen the next gen firewall thing. But don't we already have the tools to do that? We've got very good point solutions. We've got, net, we've got firewalls, we've got IPS, we've got secure web gateways. If we're worried about bringing viruses into the organization, we have endpoint protection products. Surely we, we've got all this stuff already in place. Why, why do we need yet another box? There is no firewall in the world. There is no network antivirus in the world. There is no network uh, IPS in the world. And there is no network data leakage prevention device in the world and no proxy or content filtering device that can look for viruses in any of these applications. It's that simple. The advantage of a UTM is that it's cheap. The disadvantage of a UTM is that, number one, it's very slow. UTMs are notorious for slowing down as you turn on more services. If you look at the data sheet of any, any UTM from any vendor out there, the data sheet will tell you that the UTM slows down about 95 to 99% when you turn on all different functionality. First thing about next-gen firewall is that the software architecture is different. The first very important thing is that the next-gen firewall when it receives a packet, it doesn't classify the packet based on port and protocol, right? That's the way all the devices in the world work. Today, a firewall and an IPS, an antivirus, anti-spyware, DLP, proxy, whatever you use today, when they receive a packet, they classify the traffic based on the port and the protocol. As opposed to a next generation firewall, which at the very, very low level, when it receives a packet, it classifies the packet based on which application is being used, who is the user, and what is the user trying to do with the application? There are other things that you, need, that you need to do. For example, you need to look inside SSL traffic. Right, a lot of the traffic today in the world is encrypted with SSL. I mentioned that Facebook announced two weeks ago that uh, I think it was two, either last week or two weeks ago, it was on a Wednesday, so either a week ago or two weeks ago, Wednesday, they announced that they're switching everything to SSL. Okay. Maybe we're talking to different vendors. Um, I, I, I've, I've certainly spoken to, to a few that, uh, whose whole point is that we can allow our policies now to get quite granular, that we can say, okay, we, we will allow Facebook but only for the marketing department. Yeah, and but when it gets to the marketing department, we will make sure that they're not playing Farmville. I'm, I'm willing to debate this with any other vendor. There is no single other vendor in the world today that can scan Facebook and SharePoint traffic for viruses, a firewall vendor, or a network antivirus vendor. There are very few 
niche vendors that can, you know, might be able to do it, but then it's just another device on your network and it's slow. And there are the options. The other thing that's common to all these vendors that you talk to is the performance issue still. I don't know any well, vendor out there that can scan viruses at 10 gigabit per second. Actually, you're talking about looking for good traffic. I, it's an application, it's a known application, it's something you want. So the, the permutations are presumably far less, so it should be easier actually to identify these and, and implement them.